Hi, National Review readers. Uh, this is Erica Anderson, and today I'm speaking with um, Mindy Finn, who is the vice presidential running mate to independent uh, candidate Evan McMullen. Thanks for coming on, Mindy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to be here. And uh, for those that don't know, Mindy is a friend, and I'm so excited to talk to her today. Um, and just for a little background, she um, has strong roots in the conservative movement. She's worked for the George W. Bush and Mitt Romney campaigns, um, just to, to say a little bit. And then also most recently founded the Empowered Women Organization, which is uh, something I'm a part of and I think is really exciting. So, uh, so thanks for taking a few minutes. I know you guys are so busy right now. We're like, how many days yeah. out at this point? Like 20 uh, days well, out? From tomorrow, so I guess 21 days uh, until Election Day. Yes. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be more like a hundred days in twenty one, but it'll be Absolutely. fantastic. <laughs> um, so, if you don't mind telling us, Mindy, how did this happen? How did you end up on the ticket with Evan McMullen? I know that I was really surprised and also really excited. Um, how did you guys get together, and how did he decide you were the right woman for the job? Sure. Uh, well, good question. Uh, so, you know, Evan announced his run in August. So. Um, this was always going to be a three-month campaign. Prior to that, um, I had been an outspoken uh, critic as well as organizer of Never Trump Coalition. I actually ran one of the groups that was trying to stop Trump in the primary and before the convention. Um, and I also had been in touch with and kind of trying to help a little bit the group that was uh, getting ballot access for a potential independent candidate to run um, if kind of the Trump candidacy blew up, um, which it seems like it is right now. And so they had been working on ballot access. They had been going out to, I mean, we're very transparent about this. They had talked to former, you know, candidates for president and senators and generals and members of Congress and trying to get them to run as this independent candidate. And they just got turned down um, left and right, this organization. And Evan, um, at the time, was working as the chief policy director for the House Republican Conference. He had reached out to this group, kind of, he was very dismayed by Trump's rise, the fact that Trump appeared to be about to secure the nomination, and reached out to the group to say, whoever you get, I would like to help them. Um, but ultimately, because they didn't find that candidate, they got around to Evan and they, they asked him to run. And so he stepped up. Um, that's why he stepped up in August. You know, ideally it would be earlier, but, um, but it, it had to happen. And so he stepped up. Um, and he knew, um, you know, he and his team kind of knew about me and my background as well as my work, um, you know, in opposing Donald Trump in particular, his rhetoric around um, Muslims, Hispanics, women, and every other group that he's, he's criticized. And so they reached out and asked if I would kind of help the campaign. They set up a call with, with Evan. I had met with some other folks on the team, and I knew they were going to ask me to do something. I, too, was not expecting to be asked to be the running mate. Um, but, um, so I was shocked for you know, a couple minutes after he asked me, but the more I thought about it and kind of the message that we're trying to put forward, it made absolute sense. Um, and I also felt really compelled, uh, to do it, just a duty to, to, to step up and, and play this role. So what made you feel ready to take it on? I mean, how, how long did it take you to say, yes, I mean, did you say I'm going to sleep on it and then come back the next day? Uh, so I actually didn't even take that long. Um, <laughs> we um, had had a great conversation, you know, prior to him. He said he would have an ask for me, but we just had a kind of a good conversation about the campaign and my views on it and um, my thoughts on the two other candidates, why I think they're unacceptable, why I think what Evan was doing is important. And at the end is when he asked me to consider being his running mate. At the time, you know, they had a list. They had kind of gone through a list of people they um, might ask. There was a few people they were considering out of the short list. Um, so this was just going to have me consider it. And I got off the phone. I mean, I, I talked to my husband um, briefly. I mean, he was kind of like, wow, you know, it was not <laughs> something he was expecting either. Uh, but right away, kind of both of us said, this is something that, you know, if you know, as the process continues, you're formally asked, you really need to do it. Uh, it just made sense for everything that I've worked on in my career. Um, and kind of what I believe about the future of the country and what's needed, um, that this is kind of a, a perfect opportunity to, in a positive, proactive way, um, to be able to move that forward. And what are the main policy issues you guys are focusing on? I mean, obviously there are so many, but are there any that you're really honing in on right now? 
Yeah, I mean, we are an incredibly policy-driven campaign. I think that's a great contrast to the campaign of, say, Donald Trump, for example. If you go to EvanMcMullen.com, you can see policy um, positions on a, on a whole host of issues. You know, I point to that three of the most important issues to me are the ones that are also most important to voters. Number one is national security. Um, you know, we are in crisis from two um, angles that we kind of approach that one that our military is suffering right now um, and not having the training and equipment that it needs. Um, we have cases where the fleets are too small, the deployments are too long. Um, military budgets are um, kind of at uh, mercy of domestic politics. Um, we don't believe that should be the case. We believe we need to be taking advice directly from the generals and ensure that military funding is, is separate from domestic political battles and that our, our military uh, men and women get what they need. Uh, so that's number one. Um, also, just the the threat of, of ISIS and al-Qaeda. I mean, we believe we have to defeat ISIS. Um, we cannot take a weak-footed approach when we um, say that, you know, there's going to be a red line or we make threats and we don't live up to them. That weakens our bargaining position. Um, and that just can't happen. Um, and so, you know, an issue like Syria, for example, we believe that we should have taken that on um, in a lot more aggressive fashion earlier. You know, when you identify a problem before it becomes a catastrophe, that's the best way to approach um, um, international security issues. Um, you know, right now there's a lot of discussion about the refugee issue, for example, we would not be um, having to deal with the influx of, of refugees, you know, that are fleeing Syria had we dealt with um, Bashar Assad, you know, to begin with. Another, the economy, obviously. Um, I don't know how in depth you want me to go, but all this is, uh, I'll continue until you stop me. Uh, the economy, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, we, our economy should be growing at a greater rate. Um, there are several factors there. You know, one, I believe our tax code is too complex. That's a piece, but also that um, it tends to favor special interests, you know, over small businesses, for example, who have a harder time kind of keeping up with complex um, tax requirements. Um, so that needs to be reformed. Um, regulatory environment generally is really difficult um, on small and really all size businesses in terms of their growth. And our national debt, our national debt is really holding our economy back. Um, and both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, um, you know, all of their policies would only expand the federal government, um, the federal budget. There's really not much discussion around um, how to address debt or is it something that, you know, Donald Trump talks about it. Um, but it, none of their plans indicate that they would really address it. We believe we absolutely have to deal with entitlements. It's not a popular position, but mm -hmm. it's necessary. Yeah, I was going to say what's interesting is that so many times this election season, I've been thinking, why is no one talking about the debt? It used to be like a constant topic of conversation. I, back when I worked in Congress, we were always talking about it in the past year. You hear almost nothing about it. You hear you don't hear the numbers and how they're going up. So yeah. I think that's probably one reason that you guys um, are doing so well in Utah. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you want to say a few words about you know what you're thinking about the polling, and also I think you went there last week, and what was the environment and kind of the attitude yeah. of people there? Well, Utah has been incredible. So I mean, Utah both in the in the primaries they actually rejected Donald Trump, um, you know, and Hillary Clinton. So already they're not friendly to these two major party candidates right now. So it's no surprise that they're seeking uh, another option. Um, you know, they are also, it's a very conservative state, but it's very conservative on principle. Um, you know, generally a state that is used to, has a population that is kind of used to going against the grain, does not feel that it has to fit in, um, you know, with um, kind of be socialized and cultured. They just want to stand up for what's right. And so I think that's why we are doing so well there. Um, Evans from there, so that that also helps. Um, and you know, the polling has just you know, just to keep to keep this in perspective, he launched the campaign on August eighth. Two months later, he was twenty two percent in a poll that showed Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump at twenty six percent. On a very you know we're a lean and mean campaign. We do have a great organization in Utah, but it is not a massive organization. We've been running a heavily digital campaign. Our volunteers and our supporters are incredible, and they're the drivers of a lot of that growth. We have started to do a lot of events in Utah um, in the last you know week or so since I joined the ticket. And Donald Trump, you know, new revelations have come out about Donald Trump that have further turned off Utah voters. Um, and as we just kind of get closer to Election Day, our events are kind of wall to wall packed, you know, standing room room only. I did a town hall in Syracuse, Utah with Evan last week that 
uh, was just going to be a citizens organized event of 100 people, and it was well over 400 people. Um, you know, it's just been it's been incredible. Another poll came out today, the Rasmussen poll. All the polls have had us around 2022. Rasmussen poll came out today that has us at 29. Uh, Donald Trump at 30 and Hillary, I believe, at 28. So it's wow. uh, neck and neck um, right now in the state. Um, so clearly we're invested in that. You know, we, we believe that we're on a path to win Utah. And, and we certainly, um, cer- excuse me, that's certainly what we're working towards. But as well as other states, there's other states we're doing well as well. Yeah, I've seen at least one video that um, that he's put out, be kind of appealing to people that are you know, kind of like, I don't like either one. I don't know what to do. So what is your message to people that, are still considering voting for Trump or even voting for Clinton. Like, what? Why should they um, consider something else? Consider your ticket. Sure. Um, well, you know, first of all, I would say that you know our plan from the beginning was there was a two prong strategy. One was that okay, we have more than half the country dissatisfied with these two major party options. We can actually stop both of them if this is a very close race. We're able to win a state or a few states. We can deny both 270 electoral votes and send this thing to the House. Um, and then there would be a chance, you know, for, for neither of them to get in. There would be a chance for Evan uh, to get in. Um, but right now, with the polling stacks up, it appears that, you know, Hillary Clinton is beating Trump just so, um, uh, you know, predominantly in, in all nearly all the target states that Trump is really in trouble. And so I actually don't, I don't see that we're necessarily stopping Donald Trump at this point, but there is a real opportunity for people to stand on principle to show that, you know, their kind of, um, the future they want for our country is not a future of which we demean, uh, you know, people who don't look like us. We demean um, every group under the sun people by the, because of their race and their gender and their religion. And so I think that's, that's really important. It's also important to send a message that we want honest and wise leaders um, and, you know, we, again, we believe we'll win a state, a few states, um, but we also think it's really important to start to build that new conservative movement and send a really strong message uh, about the type of leaders that we want in the future. Oh, that's such a great point. Um, so I want to switch gears just a little bit and ask you about, um, it's obviously, it's uh, noticeable that you're a woman on the ticket. <laughs> um, sure. You know, we've got Hillary Clinton running and now you're a woman v- running for vice president. There's kind of a false narrative that you know about and that I know about that, you know, Republicans are anti-woman or that the women's vote always goes to the Democrats. Um, how does your um, position on the ticket kind of speak to that and, you know, represent conservatives in a positive way? Sure. Well, you know, our ticket is about what we believe is true conservative conservatism, which is that we want equality for all, that all people are equal, um, are, have the same right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, they're all kind of protected under our constitution. Our con- the foundational principles of our constitution work for, for them all. I mean, Evan um, and myself, you know, we would like to see more diversity in the conservative movement. We believe conservative principles do work for all people. Um, and so, you know, I, I, we like that our, our ticket does send that message. Um, we're of different faiths, obviously, as a man, I'm a woman. Um, I also hear from a lot of people who support our ticket and will say, oh, thank you so much for running. It's so nice to support a woman that's not Hillary Clinton. Like, they love to see a woman in office. They're very excited about that idea. I heard this a lot in Utah. Um, you know, they're a positive role model for you know, my daughter. Uh, people were coming up to us that had drawn pictures of us. I wanted them to sign them, you know, little girls. And that was just incredible. It's it's so you, I think it's it's just so important for the conservative movement because um, it it can appear as if that there's an opposition to Hillary. You know, kind of what's conflated is opposition to Hillary's um, sort of behavior and approach, which has been reckless and and corrupt, and also her policy positions, which are, are obviously um, super far left, um, and her being a woman. I think it's very important to send the message that we are for women. Um, leading. We are four more women in the public sphere as elected officials running for president, vice president, et cetera. Um, and the reason that the reason that we oppose Hillary does not have to do with her being a woman. It has to do with those those other things. And I saw that you were interviewed by Glamour last week. Um, have you? I don't know if you've been interviewed by any more of those kinds of publications, but do you get pushback on the, the life issue, issue um, when you're speaking with women's outlets like that? You know, so far, um, we have not. And I think part of it is that we're just very resolute. We don't dance around the issue. Um, you know, in the Glamour piece, for example, they asked for my position. I think the exact question was on reproductive rights. And I said, Evan and myself are pro-life. Um, and, you know, it kind of ended there. So, um, you know, we're very transparent about everything that we believe. 
I, I want, it was really interesting is that, you know, in addition to conservatives who um, appreciate that we're the only real conservative ticket in the race, we also have Bernie Sanders supporters and, you know, independents who um, will comment, you know, comment online, they'll recruit friends, they'll say they're voting for us, they'll, and they'll, they'll say it right out, I don't agree with you on every issue, but I like that you're being forthright. Um, I like that you're bringing a new generation of leadership. Um, you know, I like that you're just very clear about what you believe and you're very transparent. And so that's really refreshing to hear. Um, and that's just the way we operate our campaign and who we are as individuals. All right. Awesome, Mindy. Well, thank you so much. That's all I've got. And um, good luck to you guys. I can't wait to see what happens. Thank you. I appreciate you doing this. Thanks.